Okay, so um, we're still setting ourselves up to log out. We were able to ask the person, are you sure you want to log out? Once we can confirm that, true or false, yeah, they want to log out. Then we go through the process of logging out. Well, um, we've kind of mechanically set up a way for the person to create an account and to log in. And then they're logged in simply because they're in PG home. That's true. And then if you want to log them out, well, we're going to go from PG options back to PG welcome. That's just it mechanically. But um, intelligently, uh, we have to keep track of who has logged in because different people can log in with their own accounts. So before uh, it fully works, uh, we have to keep track who has logged in. You know, in our in our console, it tells us who's logged in via their email, but it that kind of hasn't actually been saved in in the system. So, continuing our code here, we're going to do something inside of true, and then we have to back up to do something else for the whole log out log out to work. It's true that they want to log out, so continuing in our code here, we're going to say dollar l form log in square brackets zero dot reset so here we're saying person logs out and we reset the log in form that form may still have the data of the last person that logged in if, if a person has chosen to log out, that means someone else is going to log in or create an account or some, something else is happening. So we're going to reset the form. That's one thing. What we're also going to do then, once we've confirmed that they want to log out, okay, then move them back to the logged out screen. So uh, using the syntax we've looked at before of jQuery mobile for moving from screen to screen, remember our syntax was dollar, dollar selector dot page container. This we used it when we um, when we had log in. After we confirmed the person existed, we confirmed that their password matched our records. Eventually, then we did this to move them to change them from that current screen to a brand new screen. So it's going to be the same syntax that here we're saying in quotes. This is sort of the way to say whatever the current page is. Selecting the current screen, basically, page container, we're going to change to PG Welcome. Pound PG Welcome. So again, this is the syntax to move a person from screen to screen via pure JavaScript, via the methods and that we have here in the JavaScript file. We had simply href equals pound pg options when we want to do it in HTML, and this is what we need via JavaScript. So via technically jQuery mobile or jQuery via jQuery, uh, move them to the welcome screen. The final step is mark in memory that the current user has logged out. This code is TBD. This code is coming soon. We need to we'll do this in, in a moment. We need to set up something else first. So a little console, con console output for us that it's working up to this point, resetting the form so that, the, so that a new person has a chance to log in, moving them over to PG Welcome, and then the final code that keeps track in memory that this person has logged out. We've been using local storage to save the users that have created an account. We can also use local storage to keep track of who is currently logged in. 
so that we load their information. Their information will eventually be the stuff of part two, the database of, of their comics, their whole database of everything that they're saving. And we're going to use a, a very simple cookie in local storage to keep track of who is logged in so that then we can retrieve their whole database. Before we can set it to show that who has logged out, uh, we need to set who currently has logged in. Before we set who is logging out, we have to set who is currently logged in. We're going to go back to our function where we're logging in. So here's an example. Control F, F, N, log in. And you don't actually have to spell it correctly. I'm going to find it somewhere scrolling. Yes, but let's practice. Control F. I want to go find my function f and login. Yeah, I know it's spelled uppercases and such, but if you don't turn on match case, it doesn't matter. So if, I, if I'm trying to search somewhere in my hundreds of lines of code, control F, there's one example, enter, there's the other example. So it jumped me to line 93 or so. If I needed to find an instance of it with a specific syntax, f and login, and then I would turn on match case, and it would only find the example of that with that spelling. So at about line 93 is where our function login starts. Um, and I'm going to keep scrolling down. Let's see, we've got the local storage part. User does exist right here. Okay, so at about line 114, if the person's password that they're trying to log in with equals or exactly the same as the one in memory, okay, let them in. So finally, line nine, uh, line uh, 117. It's all been confirmed, the person exists, the password matches, log them in. Okay, that's the point then. We also have to set uh, a local storage cookie uh, that says this is the current person logged in. Set a local storage cookie of who has logged in. Local storage dot set item remember the syntax is the first thing is the name of the cookie comma the data inside of it so we're going to make a cookie called is logged in That's the name of the cookie, that's the name of the file, that's the name of, like if we're creating variables, that's the name of the variable. We put something in the variable after the comma. So if we, if we are um, logging in here, the name has been confirmed, the password has been confirmed, we're going to move them into PG Home, is logged in would be true. A person is logged in. So we'd be putting true into that cookie. We would have this global variable, so to speak. We would have this thing to keep track of. Yes, yeah, someone is logged in. Yeah, it's true. They have logged in. It's true. They have logged in. Now, that could work, but to make it work better, yes, they've logged in, and who is logged in? is tied into the email address. The current person logged in. It doesn't quite matter to know, yeah, someone's logged in. It matters to know who has logged in. And the who has that and the who that is logged in is all uh, here from temp val email login. This is storing the person's email of who's currently logged in. So into the is logged in cookie we're going to save the email address of the person that is currently logged in. And if there is some data in that cookie, in that local storage, it's basically like true. If there is data 
in this local storage object, it's basically true. Someone has logged in. This set item will only happen if someone has logged in with the right password. Set a local storage cookie of who is logged in. That's equivalent to true, but a little better, because then this tracks exactly who is logged in, not just that someone is logged in. So knowing this, <clears throat> we can um, we can start to then set up our, our complete our logout system. This is a very important thing to have here. This marks who is logged in. We'll go back to our code at the bottom where we were setting up logout. This TBD part, to be determined. Now it will be determined. Local storage dot set item is logged in. Earlier on, the person, their email and their password was confirmed. OK, log them in and mark true. They have logged in via their email. The opposite of this is they're about to log out. Using the same cookie, logically, we would put false. The person is no longer logged out, uh, no longer lo logged in. So is logged in is false. They're, they're not logged in. Like on the other part, is logged in would, would be set to true that yes, a person logged in. Here, if we set it to false, would be sort of similar to before in terms of, OK, a person is logged in, but not who exactly. Well, because is logged in deals with if there is an email saved in is logged in, it's like true. If there is nothing in that local storage object, it's like a false. And nothing, as we've seen before, is double quotes, nothing. Replace what was previously in is logged in with nothing, which is akin to false. If there's anything in that variable, it is a true. And better than a true, because it's the person's email of who's logged in that we can use to load their data. Sending it to empty here is like a false. So this fully completes the, the logout. Mark in memory that the current person has logged out. So we don't know. They, they've been moved to PG welcome, and their email has been removed from the memory. They're not logged in anymore. So we won't, we won't load their data. Um, we'll do one more console output, then we'll test it. user logged out. Probably simply local storage.delete item or remove item, something like that. There is a method that's built in. And there could be a way to do it as well with deleting it. Uh, but we're going to create it anyway every time a person logs in. So setting it to nothing or no is different than it being set to undefined. So if it gets deleted, it's undefined, and then we have to account for undefined possibility. By setting it to empty, it's null, which is a different kind of possibility than undefined. So it's just a matter of do I want to think of things as undefined or as null or as empty. It's just a matter of how do I want to deal with it. But yeah, deleting it could be a way to do it too. So you don't have, so you're creating it again. Yeah, it's going to be created. Uh, if it doesn't exist already, it's going to be created and it's going to be set to something. 
so yeah deleting it I guess it could still also work because we would be creating it and setting it when the person logs in so go ahead and save it and run it and see if you get that result go to your logout and confirm logout and check your console and it should take you back to PG welcome when you click log out and it should give you the output that says user logged out and if you look at your F12 your memory where your, all your local storage objects are you'll see that as well so I'm gonna check mine I'm going to do mine from the beginning here just so that you see the whole thing. Um, from completely from login here, I'm going to log in with that. Go. So I've logged in. Before I even go to options, if you're curious, if you want to go to storage, I'm in Firefox. Remember in Chrome, it's inside of application. But in Firefox, under storage, under local storage, in your file. I have here the data we've seen before. This user with that password with a brand new is logged in key with a value of who is it that has logged in. This user, that email. Okay, I simply logged in. I'm going to go back up to options, log out, confirm. It took me back to PG welcome. Output said user logged out storage is logged out cookie is there empty no one is currently logged in I'm gonna create a different account b at b.com password b join Log in, b at b.com, password b, logged in, local storage. I have an account of a at a.com, password a, an account of b at b, b, and is logged in. Who is logged in? B user is logged in. So because there is data in this, it behaves like a true. When there's no data in it, it behaves like a false. Therefore, we can deal with things of true-false. Again, conditional statements and such a little later. And then again, if I go back up to options, I log out, confirm, PG welcome. I look at local storage, is logged out as empty. False. Let's pause there. Does that work? Anyone need a little little help with that? Check your console. Again, when you do it over and over and over, you get a lot of console output there that you may want to clear out just to make it look clean. Just to also test it in Chrome. I'm going to run my code in Chrome just to see the slight difference there. F12 console. Now, I'm in Chrome, and you saw that I created b at b.com, and I'm logging in with b. Account doesn't exist. Each browser only can see the local storage objects that it created. So these don't pass around through different browsers. That's good. That's a little bit of security built in. OK, so I have to create this account in Chrome. bb8 at rebels.com, sure. BB, BB, join, log in, yeah, log in with BB8. I shouldn't be so clever. Um, no, oh, okay, BB, yeah, not BB8. Yeah. Go, there we go, okay. So I'm logging in on that, I'm checking my application local storage file that's what I've got there there's the key there's the value there's who's logged in log out so 
so this screen looks a little different because it's Chrome, but it's still the same functionality. Click OK. Console says I've logged out. And then the application in local storage says is logged in, false, empty. So it should be working, log in, log out. Not, not fully complete, of course, but we're getting there. Anyone need a little help to make sure this works like this? Yeah. Let me see back on the JavaScript right here, probably. And then a quick reminder, this is double quotes, nothing, no space in the middle. So in a moment we'll go on. <clears throat> what I want to do here is um, we have the ability to create multiple accounts. Different people can log in and log out. There's no indicator anywhere in the app who is logged in. There's the indicator internally in console and all of that, which the user will never see. So I want to show on screen who is the person logged in. So uh, we'll set that up that whoever logs in their email will appear on screen so that they know I'm the one logged in. Um, the way we'll do this is on the PG Home. In PG Home, there will be uh, their their email address um, will be displayed on screen to show who who's logged in. Let's go back to the HTML file. PG Home. In PG Home, we're going to create a footer. We have the header, we have the article, we have the footer. Data role footer, data position fixed. So now we've got a footer that looks like a footer, behaves like a footer, it's stuck to the bottom. We'll have an H4. H1 is usually up on the header. H4 is usually down in the footer. Then we have H2 and 3 in the article. So some more placeholder stuff here. What I want is that when the person logs in, whoever logs in, their email address will be visible on the home screen. So the person will always see as soon as they log in, OK, I've logged in with this account. And as they're in that app and they're using their account, they see their email. If their friend then says, OK, let me, let me log into my, you know, let me use your phone to log into my account, um, then they'll log in and they'll see their email address down there. So dynamically via JavaScript, we want to change the content of that H4. We want to display the person's email address down there. We've used, um, when we did the form, when we did the form, we needed to create an object for those fields. And we named those fields with a unique identifier, with an ID. So we can do the same thing here. If we uniquely identify this, we can target it via JavaScript. So if you give an ID to that H4, this is a way to um, to latch on to it via JavaScript and change it. We'll call this 
user email. The user's email will be displayed in this H4. With an ID, we can use JavaScript to find that HTML element and write something into it. Now the problem is maybe we want to display the person's email address in more than one place in the app. An ID can only be used once per, per file. Everything right now is in the index.html file. Everything that we've called an ID has only been used once to identify. This section is PG Home. No other section can have PG Home. This other section over here, PG Login, no other section can have that ID. Well, then what we're about to say here is no other H4 or paragraph or anything can have an ID of user email. Because IDs function by only one thing in the file can have that name. We have a class instead as a way to mark more than one thing should be dynamic. More than one thing can be identified. We can set a class to seven places in our project, and all seven of them will change to have the user's ID. So we'll say here. Instead of an ID, an ID that can only be used once per file, we use a class which can be used any number of times per file. We used class up here when we were setting jQuery mobile related stuff on those two instances up there. Yes, classes can be used for CSS. IDs can be used for CSS. Classes can be used for JavaScript. And IDs can be used for JavaScript. So just for the full information, IDs, classes can be used for CSS or JavaScript. FYI. So at the very least, when the person logs in, in the home screen, PG Home, they will see their email address. Anywhere that we uh, add the class user email, the person's email will appear there. So maybe their name, maybe their email could appear in the options screen, or um, you know when you save the comic screen or anywhere. But this is our anchor. This is our hook that we're going to latch onto, that we're going to use to latch onto uh, to display the person's email address here dynamically. Well, we need to then create a jQuery or a JavaScript object of this HTML element. Then write the JavaScript to write. The person's email. Before that, just take a quick look at it in the browser. Once you log in, we have a brand new footer that will be dynamically changing to be their address. But our setup first is that it's got a class, and then we'll write the JavaScript so that when I log in, my email will appear down there. We'll go back to the JavaScript, and we'll go back to where our, all of our variables are at. Now we might as well write here also variables. All right, I, down at the bottom we had our event listener, so I have a little comment that what follows are my event listeners. 
And then up here, what follows are my variables. Well, after my variables are going to be my functions. You, know, you can make your note there, functions. And style this however you want. Whatever stands out. Anyway, the variable we're about to create here, comma, because it's a new variable, dollar L user email equal to quotes dot user email, not a pound, a dot. Pound represents ID, and dot represents class. So here we're using the jQuery selector to find all instances of anything that has a class of user email attached to it. So one or 100 elements can have that class. Up here, all along, we've been doing go find an instance of something with that ID. One thing in the whole app should have that ID only. One thing, one ID. Here we're saying go find all instances. So all seven or one or seven hundred instances, all, all of them are stored in this one variable. This is a list of all of the HTML nodes that are named that. This is a variable with one uh, pointer to one thing. This points to one or 100 things. So using a class will let us write the person's email one or 100 times. Anywhere where there's that class. The moment that we want to write their email on screen is as soon as they log in. So we have our function, fn login. We've got our login function. Uh, we should have that should be the place where we where we write the person's email when they log in. So function sign up, control F, function login. If they exist, if their email is correct. If their password is correct, here it is. So at about line 117, once again here, passwords do match. Move them to PG Home. Write their, write in the, write in the is logged in, who is logged in. Before we move over to PG Home, Um, before we show them, before we change to PG Home, let's write their email address there so that it doesn't take them there and then they see XXS for a moment and then they see their email. Because remember, this is processed in sequence. So I want to write their name on screen and then change to that screen. So let's back up and say, right after passwords do match, let's write their name on screen, then we'll change them over so dollar l user email dot html so before we change screens write into any node or element named um, user email the person's email so this is saying let's go look at or let's go find every instance of something with a class user email 
let's write some HTML into that element. Right now, H4 has XXX. We're saying, let's write some HTML into that one H4. Technically, of course, anything that has that class. So, um, what is currently um, storing the person's email is tempval in email login. This is all still happening inside of the login function. And previously up there, we have a we have a copy of the person's email. So let's let's write their email via HTML into this node into all nodes that have that class. One thing before that dot to lowercase. Internally, in memory, I'm saving all their emails and passwords as uppercase. On screen, it looks a little weird, I think, as uppercase. This is completely optional, just for aesthetics. But I want to make their email lowercase on screen. So that's easy. Using the to lowercase method, <coughs> we're converting the email that is inside of that variable. We're writing it via HTML into that node. Go ahead and test it. Save it and run it and log in. Then you should see your email address down at the bottom. Log out. Log in with a different account. You should see that email address in the footer. Log out with some other email and try it again and test it out. Try to log in, log out with different emails, and the email should now appear in the footer. Check my code. So I'm going to give it a try here. I'm going to log in with my A account first. Console is doing what I expect, and then I put an A at A.com. If I then go to options, go to logout, confirm logout, it logs out. I'm going to log in, this time with my B account. B, go, I have logged in with B. If I create a brand new account, again, when you do this beta testing, you try to do all of these things. Your app worked up until a certain point. You've added new functionality. You should still try to test the old functionality, just in case. I don't want to get complacent. It's working with A when I log in and out. Perfect. Something else happened at some point that I don't realize until later. So I would still be testing my older code just to make sure that works. Brand new account here. So brand new account that I didn't have before. Joining Welcome Works. Going to log in. Logging in with that one. Logged in, log in with a brand new account I created right now. Yes. Yes. Let's see. The HTML that I did was um, right here. Did anyone need a little help? Does does that work? Are you seeing your email down there and logging in and such? Let me put my code back here.
All right, everyone, let's go on to, to do a little bit more here. Um, let's see, at this point, we've got um, log in, log out. OK, next up, for it to remember that I've been logged in, do you notice that every time, if you do a refresh, or most likely every time that you completely close the browser and run it again, you're logged out. So let's deal with that. I don't want to have to do login every time. I want it to remember that I've logged in and keep me logged in. That's how a normal app is, right? You, as soon as you create your account, I'm always logged in on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. If I choose to log out, then I can log in. But I want it to remember uh, that I'm uh, already logged in. And I will say early on right away, I've I've seen that there's some kind of bug sometimes. What we're about to do should work, and it definitely works. It has worked in the past. But sometimes as we test it in the plain old web browser, it doesn't quite work. But when we then transfer our code to actually be the app, it works. So if it doesn't seem to work, and if mine doesn't work, it's fine. Uh, it will work when we get it into the app. Uh, portion of the class. We'll write the code now and it should work. But if it doesn't, it's okay. But we'll see here. Uh, on all it's yeah, and it might be the different versions of the browsers. They've updated our browsers, so I think maybe oh. in the latest version we've got it working. But we'll see. Um, so what we want to do here is all about it remembering that we've logged in. Uh, well, we're keeping track. Um, that there's login and all of that with is logged in. So using that, if is logged in is empty, that means no one's logged in. So OK, show us PG welcome. If is logged in is set to an email, someone's logged in, therefore uh, send us to PG welcome or PG home right away. So that means, really, before any of uh, sign up or login, check. Is a person already signed in so they don't have to deal with signing up or logging in? So we're going to back up before <coughs> our first function, function sign up, uh, before these function definitions. So uh, again, we're doing this in a way that I think makes sense to create this app. We could have done this very early on in the beginning. It wouldn't have made sense to do it so early on because there was no system to actually log in. So we're going a little backwards here, but I think it makes sense because we need to wait, make a system to, log, to sign up. Then we make a need to make a system to log in. Then we need to make a system to log out. OK, now we need to think of what if they were already logged in. So that's what we're doing backwards here. Uh, we want to have here set up or check if a person is logged in. Check to see to see if user is logged in as soon as app starts. Then, okay, so if they are, send them to PG home. If they are not, send them to PG welcome. The following is not in a function. 
because we want it to execute as soon as the app starts. All of those other functions, log in, sign up, log out, none of them happen without a trigger. I click uh, the I click the, the sign in button, the sign up button, and the sign up function runs. I click the login button and the login function runs. I click the log out button and the log out function runs. Well, I want the following code to happen automatically without any trigger. Let the app load up and check. Are they logged in? Yes or no? Do something about it. So this code that follows here will not be in any function. It will just run as soon as the app does. It's going to be an if else statement. If they're logged in, show one screen, or else they're logged out, so show another screen. So without any triggers, things happen automatically. The code is processed from top to bottom, so when it gets to whatever line this is, it'll start to process this. So because the other code exists and the other code is in memory when we run our app, um, that is a contrast with this code that runs without any sort of prompting, without any trigger for it to check right away. In our first block here, we'll have some console log. This is the block that's going to deal with no user logged in. If else, remember, it's going to check true or false. Uh, this first block, something will be true that will then result in no user is logged in. No user is logged in. Um, then the else has got to be the other possibility, console log user is logged in. Okay, so when, uh, when a person creates an account and logs in, function login writes their name on screen in the footer, they're logged in. Uh, writing their name onto the screen at the moment only happens when they go through function login. This if else at the top is also serving to jump them directly to PG, PG Home. But there's no indication of writing their name on screen. So in this if else, this is where we should also write their name on screen. Dollar L user email dot HTML, the person's email. We'll put the person's email there one moment. We're going to fix that. But do you see here, we had this code before to write their name into the footer down on login. We're never going to get to login if this checks that they are logged in, so just log them in. That's why we're writing this again here so that their email is written. After the email is written, then it's the part about doing the page container change. Write this thing here again about um, mobile container, colon mobile container, page container, 
changing to comma pg home. So both of this code, we could have copied and pasted it basically over from login. We haven't finished this the question here yet, the condition. If the condition is true, that no one is logged in, this is the first part here. If the condition is false, yes, someone is logged in. We say this, we write their name on screen, we change them over to PG Home. The reason I haven't written any here, anything here yet it's going to tie into what this if will be. Local storage dot get item quotes is logged in. So if a person created an account, local storage set item is logged in, will trigger and write their email into that cookie. Get item is getting the value of that cookie, the email. Remember we said if the um, if the if there is an email in is logged in it will not be empty. If there is no email it might be undefined, it might be null, it might be some other feedback that there's nothing inside of that object. So here we're saying, let's get what has been saved into is logged in. And we're checking equality here. And we have three possibilities. It's either going to be empty. So what if we have logged out, we have already done set item empty then, okay, obviously, no one's logged in. We could have the possibility, instead of us logging out, we have never created an account. Therefore, instead of it being uh, empty, it could be null or it could be undefined. So still within those parentheses, we're going to do, we're going to check here, or. It could be this, or it could be this, or it could be this. If any of these three possibilities happen, no one is logged in. To check OR in JavaScript, we write two vertical bars or pipe characters, and these are the backslash. This is right above Enter. Right? If you just press the key, that's a backslash. If you shift backslash, it's a pipe, a vertical character. It's right above Enter. The one by the question mark, that's a slash, a forward slash. Uh, backslash is that backslash, it leans back. So when people say visit my website, HTTP backslash backslash, they're wrong. A backslash is that, and a slash is that. Anyway, we need two vertical characters, two pipes. That means OR. Check if is logged in is empty, or check if log is logged in is null. Or check if is logged in is undefined. If it's one of those three possibilities, then it must be that no one is logged in. So what's next is again local storage. Get item. The item that checks who's logged in is is logged in. We're checking if that is exactly equal to undefined or now there's no space between those pipes be very careful there's a space there there's no space there make sure there's no space there and we'll do a third one no null -L. so it's it could be empty or it could be undefined or it could be null copy and paste this to save some effort. Local storage.getItem 
is logged in space? No. So I'm checking three possibilities. And the reason for that is uh, different browsers and different devices may treat these things in different ways. Uh, through the years of doing the class, like I said, as we test it and different people say, what if we do this? What if we do that? And what if I use this browser or this device? Uh, we come across these different possibilities. So all three of these are the ultimate result. There's no one logged in. If our is logged in is empty, or if it's undefined, or if it's null, that must mean that no one is logged in. So then that would take you to PG welcome. Yes? Spaces, uh, with the five characters no space between oh, no, them between the five yeah but you can have spaces uh, there okay. yes so all those three are to check that no one is logged in uh, you can just write our comment here instead of above if you want uh, we just checked three possibilities with or, which is the pipe characters. Uh, we checked three possibilities with or uh, to confirm no one is logged in. So previously, we only had the one possibility of our if-else statement. Kind of ask one question, and it's either true or false. Here we're sort of asking three questions. Is it empty? Is it null? Is it undefined? All of those ors. If any one of them happens to be it, any one of them is true, we, we trigger this first part. No one is logged in. Um, if any of those is false, that means something must be in that is logged in cookie. We're not exactly checking is it a valid email, is it, is it the right length, or anything like that. But anything besides those three must mean someone has logged in. And, and that's not a perfect way to check things, uh, but we're still kind of building it. So. Uh, in theory, then, okay, if this code here says change us to PG Home, then um, something like it would change us to PG Welcome. We we don't really need to do it, but just kind of for fun, as a comment, PG Welcome. If the person is not logged in, okay, then take them to PG Welcome. I've got it commented out, however, you don't really need it because the code is processed top to bottom. It gets to this point, it checks, no one's logged in, it jumps here, it does not do this part. This part will only happen if a person is logged in. So if you get to this part, we say no one is logged in, it'll jump here comment it out, nothing's there, it'll just proceed on its way past the if-else. And what's past if-else is automatically PG, uh, PG welcome. So we could, to be very verbose, we could make this line say, take us to PG welcome. It'll automatically go to PG welcome. So we don't really need to do that. But definitely with this other part, we do need to change, we, need, we do need to break the, the normal flow. Because in our HTML file, the normal flow is display PG welcome, then display PG sign up, then PG login, then PG uh, home. So that, that'll be correct. Um, the final thing here, we want to display their name on screen. We don't have access to temp val in email. We don't have access to the temp 
val in email because those are those are variables that are existing in a different function. Any variable that exists here it is uh, temp val in email is what we used previously uh, to write the person's name on screen right here. User email writes an HTML write their email address lowercase temp val in email temp val in email comes from checking the value of the input field from login. But this variable only exists in the world of this function. Any variables you create in a function can only be used and accessed in that function. And those variables only exist as long as that function is running. So because we've got our if-else part up here um, that is not in any function, it can only access global variables, which are the ones we created at the top. We cannot access variables inside a function. So that's why we can't use tempval in, in email. But we are able to see who is logged in with local storage get item. So we can use that. That's also keeping track in a global sense. That's also keeping track of who is logged in. Local storage dot get item is logged in. Local storage dot set item is logged in has been set when the person logs in. So that's in memory. That's permanent. That doesn't erase when the function is done or when the or when the app closes. Local storage is permanent, pretty much. So that is being saved into the memory. We are doing set item when we log in. And that's how we're able to do get item at the very beginning before all of that, because it, it makes sense that if a person has logged in, it has been set, so we can check it. Well, if a person never logged in, it's either empty, undefined, or null. Therefore, they're not logged in. Don't do anything. They must be logged in if we trigger else. So um, uh, on screen, write their email address in PG Home or anywhere that that class exists, and then move us over to Home. This is the part, however, if we test this, it may or may not work. But we will confirm that it is working enough if you do see the user is logged in. If you at least see that in your console, it is working, even if the page doesn't transition over to PG Home. Again, sometimes these browsers have that little bug. So let's give it a shot. Let me check on mine first, just so that you don't freak out if it doesn't work. If it looks like mine, then it's, it's fine. Let, let, let me try mine. As soon as I refreshed my browser, is logged in. It didn't transition me over to PG Home, but it is confirming I've logged in. Let's look at this. OK, I'm going to sign in. I'm going to sign in with an account. I'm going to click the log out. Log out. I'm going to close the browser completely. I'm going to run the code again. F12. No user logged in. Because the last thing I did was a log out. Uh, Local storage set item is logged in was set to empty. I've logged out. And the code on line 41 is detecting that is logged in is equal to empty. So that one of the first uh, checks happened. This one here. Therefore, it printed no user logged in. If I log in with another account here. Okay, logged in. I'm going to close it completely. Run it again. F12. User is logged in. Is logged in was set at a certain point to BB, whatever I called it. It's not automatically animating me. Let me go see over in Chrome if it does do it. All right, was I Chrome or was <coughs> I Firefox? User is logged in. So it's. 
it's not going to transition it over, maybe, but that's okay as long as you do see here. So I, I wasn't logged in on Firefox. No user logged in. To confirm, I will log in. At that point, set item was triggered. I'm going to close it completely. I'm going to run it again in Firefox. F12 is logged in. Yeah. Will it be ideal? I mean, will it? I'm going to ask this. When we transfer it over to a mobile application, will it automatically? Because it's ideal that it goes to PG Home. Exactly. Okay. Right now, as we're testing it in the browser, the browser, I don't know why it doesn't obey that command, even though we've seen that the, the command that it seems to be ignoring for the moment is that whole PG transition thing, this thing right here. It's ignoring this page container move. I don't know why, even though we know we've seen that work before. And this is not misspelled. It is PG Home. So the code should work, and it will work when we transfer it to the mobile development environment. Uh, if we run this, I haven't been running this at all in um, any other browser. You could then fully test it in the other browsers. You know, we don't have we don't have Opera in the menu there, but I'm going to open it in in Opera, another browser. So I'm going to open that um, that project in Opera. I've never run it today in Opera, so. It's not Opera. Uh, this is Opera. Open with Opera. No user logged in. So Opera is an alternative web browser. It's similar to Chrome. It's from a different company, but it borrows a lot of the code. And right here, I, I have not logged in. I have not used the Opera browser today. So I'm coming into it raw. There's nothing saved inside of local storage nothing at all there's not even an is logged in there's nothing so that's got to be hitting one of these probably null um, null often happens when something has never existed and undefined often happens when something was existed but deleted and then empty is empty so most likely local storage get item null is happening so therefore it triggers line 41 no user logged in I've never logged in with Opera I'm gonna create a brand new account here in campus join login Logging in with that account. Local storage now shows that my email exists and is logged in exists. If I close Opera completely, and then open the index file with Opera. Before I do anything, F12. So those things do exist this time. And then the console says is logged in. It's just not animating me over to PG PG Home. So a little a little anticlimactic. It, it you still are going to need to as we test it the, uh, one more week next week. We have one more week of this part of the class. As we test it, we you will have to manually be logging in again. But it, it is going to work. And then in part two of the class in two weeks, when we start to get into the actual using devices, um, uh, supposedly uh, there's a brand new set of like 30 tablets that they're about to give us in the class. So everyone should be able to have a tablet. Uh, hopefully if they get them in soon. Um, so we will be able to have a class set of tablets for everyone if you'd like to use it. In part two of the class in two weeks we will then uh, learn about the software and the uh, environment to transfer this humble web project into a real app environment and we will use this as a real app on real devices and then at that point it should automatically detect things and it should automatically log us into PG Home. And then we will continue in the project um, using device uh, features like geolocation and um, 
social media and other cool stuff. But uh, we're going to end the main lecture in just a moment. Um, we covered a lot here regarding um, this login, logout. Uh, general questions on how this is before we do some lab time. Oh yes, GitHub. Okay, I'll do that just one moment. Any questions on uh, on the class at the moment, on the code and such? You need a little help there? Okay, I'll be there in one moment. General questions about the, the lecture? Okay.